Uh, welcome everyone, my name is David and I'm the Director of Education here at Signature Theatre. We are so glad to have all of our friends joining us here in person and all of our friends joining us at home via YouTube. Uh, welcome to this month's Inside Signature. For those of you who've never been to one of these before, it's a pretty simple format. After I make a couple of announcements, we, it's just a conversation between friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll ask some questions. If at any point you friends here in person have a question, just raise your hand good, good and high. And if you are at home and you have a question, just send it into the chat and in an appropriate moment, uh, James will take that question and pass it on to us. So a couple of things coming up or going on here at Signature that we hope you all know about. Uh, King of the Yees, which is going on right now, which we'll be spending most of our time talking about today, goes through the 22nd. Yes, it's worth applauding <laughs> that show. Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yay. It's, it's a great show. Um, and out of curiosity, those of you who, uh, in, who are here in person, who has seen it so far? Okay, oh, wow. so most tonight. <laughs> tonight. Great. And folks at home, I hope you've seen it too. Uh, uh, Ragtime opens uh, right after the closing of King of the Yees on the 24th here in the Max. Cannot wait. And next month's Inside Signature, we're not ready to announce who the guest is quite yet, but it will be a cast member from Ragtime. So looking forward to seeing you all on uh, November 2nd for next month's event. Uh, so we have with us two friends here. Would you mind uh, introducing yourselves to our audience here? Yeah, hi. I'm Ashley Nguyen, and I play Lauren in King of the Yees. Uh, I'm Grant Chang, and I play Larry Yee. Awesome. Thank you both for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us. Of course. So I wanted to open today, and this isn't how I normally do this, but I was reading some interviews yesterday with Lauren Yee about the, the show, and I came across one that I really, really liked a lot. She says, we're going to start the conversation today with this quote. She says, if there's an action I would want King of the Yee's audiences to take, it would be to call up their parents and say, hey, tell me, what, what, tell me about that time that blank happened, or who was so-and-so just to begin having a curiosity for their own families and their own histories. So in that spirit, I'd like to start today with uh, each of you oh, telling gosh. us a little bit about your families. Tell us about who you, who you come oh, from wow. and, and where you're from and all that stuff. Tell us a little bit about who that and where you come from. Question. Oh, that's <laughs> ladies first. <laughs> I mean. Oh boy, um, well. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm Vietnamese. Mm. Um, I'm first generation American, so both my parents were born in Vietnam, mm. um, and I guess I'll start with my mom's side. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom was born in Vietnam, and then um, when she was five or so, she had to flee the country. Her dad was um, captured um, and put in an, in a, an internment camp. Um, and we actually don't know exactly where he is or mm. what happened to him. So unfortunately, that's like um, a part of my past that I don't know. Mm. Um, but my grandmother, she is a fighter, a trooper. Um, she's amazing. And she brought her three kids here. Um, no, to Belgium. Oh. And um, in Belgium, she raised them, didn't know the language, had to like fight from the ground up, you know, the immigrant story. Mm -hmm. um, and then my dad, he, my grandfather was the president of the bank in Vietnam. So he was very like high up there. And when he was, um, when the war happened, his family basically lost everything about three times. And he wrote this whole book about it, which I started rereading again because of King of the Yees, um, just to kind of get a better sense of my, where I come from. And um, he was able to take his family to Maryland, um, and that's why I'm here now. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit, a wow. little... Synopsis of my family. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just a small one. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I well to tell you a little about my background. I'm from New York City. I'm from Chinatown. So obviously, this play uh, resonates with me. Um, uh, but in terms of my family, my dad, who is no longer with us, um, so that makes uh, if you've seen the play a very challenging monologue at times. Yeah. Um, but uh, he was originally from China, from a, a very wealthy family, and he had to leave 
to escape the communists, and he went to Cuba. And then from Cuba, he forged life, but then again, the communists came once again, so he had to move to New York. Uh, so I come from an association in Chinatown in New York City um, called the Chinese Cuban American Benevolent Association. Oh. <laughs> so I grew up in Chinatown knowing very much like what associations are all about. Uh, in terms of my mom, she also came from China from the war. She came here when she was 16. and. Um, the fascinating thing about her is that I found all these pictures of her in like, um, like really all dolled up during mm. back in the day, like you know when people used to get dressed up to, uh, in suits and dresses, um, and she would never tell me why <laughs> she has these pictures. She's like the one Asian woman, maybe what that's it, probably in the 1950s, in a sea of. Americans, like Caucasians, you yeah. know? And so I'm fascinated, but I don't know the story and I can't she tell you tell anymore. You? She won't tell me. Wow, yeah. interesting. And at some point you both discovered acting. Tell us about how you found this, fell into it. Tell us your, your theater, your acting stories, rather. Grant, why don't we have you go first this time? <laughs> okay, right. Uh, I think I started acting because I went to NYU and I was following that path of going to a college, a university, and not knowing what I wanted to do. So I was initially going to be an economics uh, major, and, and instead I decided, well, college is for learning. <laughs> so I didn't tell my parents, and I switched over to East Asian studies, because I was like, I gotta know about myself. Uh, and then I started taking an acting class there, and uh, it petrified me. I was scared, right? And I was like, but it was the thing that felt, that made me feel so alive. And I was like, this is what I want to feel like all the time. So that's how I started acting. I love it. Oh boy, um, <laughs> not, an, not as interesting. Um, I was probably like, 12 and my parents they my dad got my mom um, these tickets to see wicked at the kennedy center for their anniversary <laughs> and they went they didn't take me obviously um which is kind of rude but they came back this but the ruder part is they came back and then they were like ashley you would have loved yeah. this <laughs> you would have loved yeah. this <laughs> And so I was like, dang, I missed out. So then they were like, listen to the um, cast recording. I did, fell in love, caught the theater bug. My parents then went, um, took me to see Les Mis, and then took me up to New York to see Wicked, and then the rest was basically history. I oh. then, the next year I played Annie, uh, with the red hair and everything in middle school. <laughs> Were family supportive of the decision to go into this, or was there any hesitation? No. <laughs> they were not supportive. You come from an Asian family, they're pretty, they're like, what are you doing? Oh. Because, you know, obviously they wanted me to always not struggle yeah. and like have a job that, you know, can support me. You know, as the, the life of an actor is a struggle for mm. sure. And we do what we do because we love it so much. Um, but it, you know, it's a struggle. So my parents said no. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and you didn't even tell them at first when you switched over, right? Or, no, no, no. Yeah. I didn't even tell them at all. Because <laughs> I was like, I know what they would say. Um, but, you know, uh, it's been a few years now. Yeah. So I, they've, <laughs> they've come to accept it. Uh, they come to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> and family? Um, they were, it was a little bit of a mix, I guess. Um, they were really supportive of me doing theater in high school and put me in the voice lessons and, and let me do theater after school and everything. But when it came to colleges, my mom's biggest thing was, Ashley, you need to have another thing. Mm -hmm. It can't just be theater. And maybe you want to just minor in theater, which is like really difficult to do and not really mm, kind does. Of yeah, yeah, it doesn't exist, especially if you want to do musical theater um, because the schedule is so rigorous. Mm. 
So I was like, fine. I majored in musical theater and I minored in finance and accounting to appease my mom. <laughs> but now they're very supportive. There's still some, like, we go, there's up and downs. Um, they do see me struggle sometimes and they see, like, how difficult it can be. So it's just a parent being a parent. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. So you both went to school for it. Were, were the gigs coming up right after graduation or what? what's the post? college story for you. I mean, I'm a little older than she yeah. is. So back in the day, there weren't that many parts. Mm. Uh, to be an Asian American actor, um, the parts that I was going up for or were going up for uh, were like delivery boy <laughs> or like, you know, something real, like really tiny and really small. So. It's only, it's, it's been like a journey because uh, Jacob, who is also a cast member, we've had that conversation. Like when we started out, we didn't have opportunities that we do now, you know. Yeah. The world has progressed so much, right? And it continues to progress that people can, you know, just see us for us yeah. more and more instead of like, going for the Asian part mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. We are just like Gran and Ashley, you Love know? That. Yeah. Yeah. And coming out of college for you, actually I want to backtrack with you because you graduated relatively recently, yes. right? Yes. So when did you, can I ask when you graduated? 2021. So you would have done some Zoom yes. college. So, <laughs> That's so, <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about what is studying theater on Zoom in a pandemic like? It was very tricky. <laughs> it was very difficult. Um, uh, so I, the pandemic started the spring semester of my junior year, um, halfway through, mm. and so no one knew how what was going to happen. Obviously, and Zoom was relatively new, mm -hmm. right? So they didn't. A lot of the teachers were still trying to figure out that technolo um, technological hump, and. I remember my tap teacher was like, "You, if you don't have a place to tap, you need to go to Home Depot, get one of those plywood boards, yeah. put it somewhere, and tap. And so we did that. I don't know if any of my dance teachers could see anything. I used a chair as a um, ballet bar. Um, my vo we had to buy like mics for like voice lessons so that they could hear it better. There was a lot of equipment necessary in order to get, not to mention that like halfway through, my all of my like technology started like crapping out on me. Like my camera stopped working, everything. <laughs> But um, it was very odd, but we made it work. And I'm very grateful that we were able to still have that um, technology to continue my education. Yeah, and once you graduated, was, what, were there day jobs or did you start landing the acting stuff right out, right out of the gate? Well, I had booked a small gig my junior year for the summer. Um, and it got canceled because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So then luckily for me, it was pushed back to like um, May of 2022 okay, or 2021 or something like that. So 2022. And so there was like a one year gap where I didn't have really any projects going on because theaters were still trying to come back and everyone was still trying to figure it out. But after that, I was very fortunate to um, be working and find jobs. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so aside from obviously being a self-professed theater nerd, um, I'm also a schedule kind of nerd. And so when things like this happen, I, I just, it, it, it just comes naturally to me. So I've been telling everyone who will listen that the DMV area has scheduled three Lord E plays mm -hmm. this season. Um, and when things like this, your guys are number two. And when things like that happen, it's, it's never a coincidence. It's happened a few times with a couple of playwrights over the years. So I'm just wondering whether you knew that or, or, or either way, just about what, what is it you think about Warren E. That's, that's getting her plays, you know, that something like that would happen in, the, in a geographic area. I don't know if it's a planned, like, scheduled thing. Yeah, it's not. It I mean, not. she's just a damn good writer, yeah, she is. you know? Yeah. She knows and how to tell a story. I've also done... Uh, uh, the Great Leap, which she wrote, and I did it at Roundhouse um, in 2021. Um, and it's she's just she's just a wonderful writer, and she really taps into families and and the dynamics of relationships. Um, and so I think that resonates with all of us, right? We really can't connect to it. So I 
I just think she's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any thoughts on Lauren's writing and why, why your stuff's so hot these days? I think she's amazing. I think I'm so glad she's getting the time that she deserves in this space and yeah. in, in this area. Please. Okay. I think um, when we have these plays that shine a light on our perspective, on what we go through, um, and it, it gives the audience a perspective, you have no idea, you can't walk in our shoes, you don't, you, you never will, but when you come to uh, see a play, especially an Asian American play, um, it, it shines a light on how w the things we go through. I mean, King of the Yeast is exactly it, what is happening. And so yeah. I just think it's, it's informative and life is progressing and people are getting better and better. And I only, you know, I grew up in a time, I'm like a old, okay? So <laughs> I grew up in a time where racism was like really, you know, everywhere. I mean, it's still everywhere, right. don't get me wrong. But we have progressed so much in this country and my hope is that we just continue and continue on. My hope is like, I don't know if it'll happen in my lifetime, but that one day we won't even see color. We'll just see people, you know? And that's, you know, when we do stories like this, um, you know, that, that moves us forward. Got a question coming in from online, James. So one thing is just you do have some requests on like repeat. Okay. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That is a really specific question. So, <laughs> that, question, at what point in your career did you uh, play Little Red at Red? That was the gig okay. I was talking about. It was uh, April, May of 2022, I believe. Hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank you. <laughs> and for our folks at home, I will start repeating the questions so that you all can hear at home. David, please. Uh, I looked at both of your bios, and each one of you has had roles that are not, quote, typically Asian as well as roles in productions like King of the Yees. So I wonder, in terms of your bucket list, hmm. is there a role for each of you that you would like to have that isn't typically considered an Asian role? Gosh. And then, <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> then, <laughs> then part two, <laughs> Always. is there a role that deals with Asian characters that you would really like to have? Both sides of the street. So, to, to repeat the question, role, uh, dream roles in terms of roles that are maybe not typically seen as roles for Asian actors, and then a, a dream role that is maybe specifically written for an Asian actor. <laughs> Honestly, I just love to act, yeah. right? So, if I have an opportunity to play a part, um, it, and it's challenging, uh, I will do it. So I don't have a dream, dream yeah. role. I just want to act for the rest of my life mm. as long as I can. And in terms of like an Asian American role, the great leap playing Wen Chang was a dream role like for me. So, you know, that part is checked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? right. For me, it's more about whether or not I can tell the story, not about like what race they are. Um, who they are. If I if I feel like I can tell the story, that's what I want to do. You know what I mean? So um, I don't have any like dream roles that are like popping out. I like Grant. I just love what I do, and I will do what I love. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk King of the Ease. Most of us here have seen it, but not everybody. For those who have not, what is this show about? What's the story? <laughs> <laughs> It's like Lauren says, it's an epic joyride. It's about family. It's about a father-daughter relationship. 
um, and how <coughs> we have a bit of a generational misunderstanding um, and struggle between each other and how we're able to come together and better understand ourselves through a, a whimsical journey that Lauren takes. I love it. And who are the people that you play in this, this journey? Well, I play Larry Yi, and uh, he is the father to Lauren Yi, who Ashley plays. Yes. And he's a really fun guy, that's yeah. all I want to tell you. He, he has a lot more energy than I do, so every time before I get on stage, I'm like, okay, take three deep breaths and just go. And that's what I do. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and I play Lauren, Larry's daughter. Um, she is a lot smarter than I am, um, and she's first generation American. She's a playwright, and um, she's trying to get one of her plays up and running. It's it, if you haven't seen it yet, and if you have, uh, uh, it's it's a pretty meta theatrical mm -hmm. piece, right? Yes. yes. You you are playing the playwright and her and real father and there are points that are people playing you playing those characters and imagine how meta theatrical it was when they actually came <laughs> right, <I'm there. laughs> okay. if you yeah. don't know the playwright uh, lauren yi came with her parents so we, we i play her dad and her dad was actually in the audience yeah. so yeah. we were totally stoked <laughs> yeah. so anytime any meta theatrical piece comes our way somebody in the audience inevitably says i didn't need that part why couldn't they just tell the story straight why do you think that is part of this i mean in some ways it is the story right like what what talk to us about the form the beginning of, yeah and and like why and like we cut to these scenes of the actors off stage just talking like talk to us about what Lauren's written and why you think that is the way to tell this particular story I, that's a hard so, question yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know I don't know her rhyme or reason for writing it this yeah. way but I just love it so much uh, and the truth be told it's like a play within a play and then also like the first 40 pages of this play are incredibly um, fast, yes. dense, and fast, dense, and it gives you a lot of information. And I don't know if this play would be a success if it d didn't do that. Yeah. you know. Yeah. I think the at least the first forty pages, which is what we call scene one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That first forty pages is kind of what grounds the story, in my opinion. It's autobiographical, right? So. Um, that is what shows Lauren's real life, like Larry as a real person, as a real, um, and these actors as real people. And it allows us to ground ourselves hmm. and then takes us on this whimsical journey yeah. to, at the end, circle back, get back to realism, get back to real life, get back to Lauren figuring out who she is and where she comes from. And, who her father is so that's how i envision like why lauren did that but obviously right you're not, not lauren. Right. <laughs> so obviously, i just play her I mean, for those who have seen it you know the payoff in the end for all of this is pretty wonderful it, um, but, yeah, it's um, great. but in regards to the actors i think it also brings in this like beautiful comedy but also like it's so real because every Every day in rehearsal, or like we're outside eating lunch, we are having these exact conversations mm. that actor one and actor two have. And it just brings so much light on like some social issues and some like how actors are, who, like what we do, how we think, and yeah. Yeah, so. I love it. It's great. I saw a, a question, please. So the play ends, what's the next scene in your minds? I feel like... Uh, we get food? Uh, we get food, we always get food. Um, that I, I feel like there is a door that is now left open that 
the two characters can finally, it's still, it's never, you know, communicating with a parent is never like, you're going to be like perfect. It will never be perfect. We all know this. Um, uh, but I feel like having opened this door, L Lauren and Larry are able to connect more and understand each other more. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's just growth mm -hmm. that's going to happen for the two characters. And the continuation of the, um, the excerpt that you yeah. got from Lauren, asking more questions about where she comes from, her past, mm -hmm. his past, who he was. Yeah, I love that a lot. Please. Vicky, question. After the reconciliation at the end, will she move to Germany? <laughs> ooh, ooh. Can you say that? I, I don't you know. Don't have, you don't have to say that. I but, don't know oh. if I can answer that. Well, of course, I'm, but... I mean, you can't, but I'm. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> and also, there are people who haven't seen the show yet. Yes. So. yes. Yeah. Your interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. David, please. Uh, you mentioned something about summoning your energy before you go on. This play has more activity and demands more of the actors, both in terms of ceaseless motion <laughs> and also keeping precisely in the many different characters that the three other actors are providing you. So how do you survive? It's a marathon yeah. and a sprint at the same time. So this show's a marathon. What do you do to get through it eight shows a week? <laughs> <laughs> as, wow. as one of our I, cast members still I get a little break in act two yeah, so I'm just do. like eating <laughs> the truth is I'm like oh, I gotta eat some more food to, get, to burn some energy you know um, but I think we rest a lot and uh, the, I will say this cast is really special yes. like we all love each other to that to the ends of the world right and so we're always here for each other. So when we get on stage, even though it feels like if, if someone skips a line or anything like that, we can catch each other and like help each other through. Um, it, it's rare that that happens. Once in a while it happens, but you know, <laughs> that's life, all right? Um, but I don't even know what I wanted to go. I'm just like, I love this play and I love this cast. I think it shows mm -hmm. that when you do something that you love with people you love, it transfers uh, to an audience quite quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, to piggyback off, it helps that we all love each other and we want to be here. We want to tell this story. I think all of us connect to this story in a way yeah. that's so special to us. So being able to be here and be present really helps us stay um, active and able to um, continue on. But Sylvia Kwan would say, drink water. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a question in the back? I was thinking about talking about people that are still alive. So it's certainly seems like there's room you can come back in 20 years and that play and go, oh, you know, play the next phase of the relationship. Right. Like you said, that, and talk to the playwright about that. Hey, why don't we look at you right now? Yeah, like, I, yeah, please, sorry. You mean like ask Lauren, how's that relationship going? <laughs> right. <laughs> Do we got another play in you <laughs> with this, huh? King of the East too? <laughs> Queen of the East? Queen yeah, <laughs> the sequel coming. Queen of the East. Uh, okay. um, the, the play is beautifully specific in terms of culture and location and language. What is the universal in this story? Because I think it hits people even if they haven't been to these places or speak these languages. What is the universal in King of the East? We all come from somewhere. We all have a cultural background, right? And that defines who we are in, in many circumstances. But as, a, as Americans, right, we also assimilate into this culture. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the commonality of it is that it, at the core center of this play, 
it is about love, it is about family, it's about relationships and how to communicate. So I think it transcends like being Chinese, you know. Mm -hmm. It, you know, even though it's really set in Chinatown. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have anything to add to that? No, I think you said it perfectly. Barbara, please. Yeah. Um, I just was curious as to what you do when you're not acting. I, I know that you uh, actually got your degree, or under, one, one of your degrees in finance. So do you do any finance stuff, or what do you all do when you're not acting? Are there day jobs? What do you do when you're not doing this? I do have a day job. Um, I have. I own my own insurance um, practice, so that <laughs> that is what I do in addition to acting. She's Asian. What can I, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> but there are pockets of time where you're not working in the theater, so you got to find something else. Right, right. Hmm. Uh, I audition a lot for film and TV, um, and so. That's what I do, but also in New York City, I'm a dance teacher. Oh, wow. very good dance cool. teacher at it. That's yeah. great. Um, you mentioned earlier that between the father and daughter in the story, that there's a generational divide. Um, is it just that? Like, what what is what is that conflict between these two? What, what where, where are the misunderstandings? <laughs> uh, there's okay. okay. Well, I don't know, this is more your character, but in my experience, when you're, like, when your parents are immigrants, there's a lot of things that they try to shield and protect you from, and there's somewhat of an unhealthy optimism that, like, comes into the relationship that, as the child, you don't really see a lot of who they are, where they come from. Um, so I feel like for me, in, in what I've conjured up in my head, that's a little bit of what Larry and Lauren have, mm -hmm. where Larry has a hard time expressing or talking about what happened to him, how he grew up, his past, and therefore creating this divide mm. um, between Lauren and Larry. Yeah. I think... Um, I grew up in a, a generation where my dad was a lot like super Chinese, this is how I would put it. Uh, would never really tell you how he feels or what he's gone through and not share that uh, with you. And I think Larry does the same thing because he does want to shield Lauren uh, a lot from from all of that and also he wants to move on. Chinese people are weird, okay? So they love to not say things right mm -hmm. but sometimes they expect you to just know <laughs> you know and here uh is where that communication line kind of falters yeah 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 um you're both like we've established you're playing real not only real people but the playwright and her father um <laughs> Talk to me about that. Are you? Are, did you have interaction with Lauren during the process, or or Larry? Did you? If so, did you? What did you learn from them? Let's start there, and then I've got some other thoughts on playing the playwright. We were very fortunate to um, be able to have a discussion with her. We actually met um, her and Larry on Zoom one day during the rehearsal process. And we learned so much in that little interaction. Like you could just see what Lauren was trying to portray when writing Larry and herself because it was almost like we were watching the show when they were interacting. Exactly. Um, also, but you know, we take all this information that they give us and as actors, we there, we create characters. Mm -hmm. And that's my question. Yeah. Are you playing them or are you playing your, the character? I'm playing an interpretation <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. of a character, of, of Larry, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Did they have any notes for you after they saw the show? <laughs> no, they just loved it. Yeah, they were lovely. Larry Yee cried. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. I was like, lovely. I did my job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ashley, please. Yeah, I don't know much about that. You can, uh, well, ideas. Yeah, right? well, no, uh, Leland Yee yes. uh, is in this play as well, and he's, 
you know, was a politician in San Francisco, um, and that's a, a true story. And then wow. there's uh, the gangster by the name of Shrimp Boy, who's <laughs> an actual person and in jail now. Um, so, yeah. And the Lum Elders were inspired by the elders in San Francisco Chinatown. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Okay, fun. Jacob, please. Um, this may be more of a comment because it, it's possibly more of a question for, for me, but based on what you have been, been talking about, I'd be like, okay, so, you know, were there elements of either yourself or your character, uh, or, or other your father, or other characters, specifically the two of them, that you just kind of, that you knew you made up even like little things because they just worked better on stage, or you wish something had happened, or you wish somebody would have, would have done something. I mean, I haven't seen the play, so I don't know how much gets into, but it just seems like that's hmm. a great really great sort of yeah, I so what's the divide, be, to re repeat yeah. for our folks at home, like, what's the divide between who they are and what you're making on stage, and, yeah. Oh, I, I don't think we're doing an exact portrayal yeah. of Lauren or Larry. I don't think she wrote that. That's she either. didn't write yeah. it in, in that manner, so. You'll see it that's tonight. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that fascinates me about this play, and I've seen it twice, and it's sold out now, so I can't see it again. <laughs> uh, is the way that it deals with the question that you find in any immigrant group. How much do the parents who come to this country want their kids to stay in the community, to stay, as it were, in Chinatown, and how much do they want them to go out and explore what's in the country beyond the bounds of the community, and also what do the children feel? Because that's at the heart of this play. Mm -hmm. you, your character never learned Chinese, and yet your father wants you to stay in Chinatown. And it's something that we find in every immigrant group over the centuries that has come to this country. It's true for my own immigrant group, many others. What was the question? <laughs> there were like a okay, couple. Okay, okay, okay. The basic question is the, the tension between feeling that the immigrants should stay in their own little community, Polish town, Irish town, whatever, and the desire to get up and out and move out. And in fact, in D.C., Chinatown yes. is no longer right. Chinatown. Right. All they've got is the gate. Mm -hmm. ah. And that the Chinese Americans who were in the city have moved out mm -hmm. and they're, they're everywhere. That is all. I, I, you know, I'm from New York City, Chinatown, and it's changed drastically and a lot. But there's an influx of Chinese Americans who are hell-bent on keeping Chinatown alive and mm -hmm. it is now thriving, right? So I thriving. thriving, yeah. And in terms of your parents wanting you to stay to keep the community strong, I think it transcends being in Chinatown. As long as you have in your heart your community and know where you're from and you take that with you and you uh, teach your children about it to keep it alive. That's all that truly matters. Yeah. It's like um, what the chiropractor says. It's in your bones. Like yeah. as long as you have it with you. Yeah. Um, we started off talking about your families. Have family seen this show? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And did they? Did they like it? They find personal connection to it. My family loved this show. My mom particularly. Saw she's, it twice. She saw mm. it twice, yeah. opening and then last week. And um, this is one that she, she has a hard time understanding shows sometimes because they go so fast. But for some reason, this one, she understood. And like, she's mm. trilingual. So English oh, wow. is her third language, which wow. is also why it's probably difficult to understand. But this one, she understood so well. And she loved it so much. She came up afterwards and she was like, Ashley, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> she was like, I'm like, I understand now why you do what you do. 
Um, and mm. just the little things that like Jen and, and everyone was able to create in this world is so accurate, like the Lum Elders and the tapping. Mm. My mom absolutely loved that, the little <laughs> Tai Chi movements. She really could resonate with that. So mm. my family's loved it. Good. <laughs> but they might be a little biased. Yeah. <laughs> George, please. Yeah, talk about playing this madcap crazy show in a tiny little space. Um, this is scary as hell, man. <laughs> now, uh, honestly, uh, uh, it took a while for us to, we have to interact with, with the audience, obviously. Um, so it took a while, but now I really, really enjoy being in a room and like just seeing everyone's faces and their reaction and, you know, like talking to them. So, um, yeah. Fun. I can't imagine in a bigger setting yeah. Yeah. at this point, it's like this show feels like it was made to be with the audience, not be done for the audience, you yeah. know? Um, and so, I like the little interactions that we get with the audience here and there, especially in that first act, is like priceless. And like in, in the end, to do that um, that final scene and be able to like look everyone in the eyes and and talk to them is something that I don't know how other theaters have done it in a bigger space. Mm. Yeah, it feels right to be in this space mm -hmm. doing this play and. Our director, Jennifer Chang, did an amazing job on utilizing this tiny little space and creating this world. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just a joy to do. What's the difference between uh, theater and the round and the machine? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, what are the challenges of this show for each of you? What makes this one, what are the hard things about King of the Yees? <laughs> huh? Give you the date of the time, right? Uh, yes. I, yes. <laughs> That's one. Um, energy, energy, yeah. energy. Like, I drink coffee, and I'm like, I'm going to go out there and do this, you know? So it's just like, like every night, just having that energy and that focus. Mm. Um, this was very challenging for me, especially at the beginning. Um, I think there was a lot that I needed to learn and grow from this, and I have, and I'm still learning and growing, but I think really what makes this role and the show the most difficult is that it, it hits so close to home, mm. and it's so real, and to, fi to be, have to find that vulnerability and be able to portray that in this show, um, that was quite challenging, but very rewarding. I will say also one yeah. challenge is like, Larry's a little older than yeah. I am. <laughs> so, so is Lauren. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that, that was a challenge in itself too, yes. <laughs> um, what are the joys of King of the Yees? Too many to count, too many to Throw list. a couple at us. I'm already getting sad. It's only, <gasps> we have two and a half more weeks, I was thinking about this. And I am already getting sad that I will have to leave and, and not see these people every day. You we know. are truly a family. We look out for each other. We bring each other food. We make sure everyone is like safe and, and like happy. And it's, I don't know how to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to answer the question, um, it's just so fun, you know, like, the lion dance, getting to twerk on stage, um, <laughs> um, having like the Arhu player come in and the face yeah. changer oh, and yeah. every little moment is so, uh, model ancestor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so it's so fun to just be in and yeah. to have happen. Barbara. Uh, two questions. Okay, do you speak any other languages, each of you? And may you take this on someplace else and do the show at another theater. So, question one, do you speak any languages? And then separate question, do you uh, see doing this role, these roles again somewhere else? 
So I'm from Chinatown, so I do speak that dialect of Cantonese. I also speak a little Mandarin, um, and um, I had texted our director the other day. I was like, we should go to L.A. Let's do this. Yeah. It, it's been done in L.A., yeah. but I'm like, not this one. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Um, I speak a little bit of Vietnamese, learned my canto from yours truly, Grant Chang, um, and I mean, I would do this show always and any day. Yeah. Mm, love it. Please. Yes. There's, there's a lot of gentle stereotypes in the play, you know, about my ethnic group and yeah, yours. <laughs> um, and I wonder which of those you think is, uh, do you think use of humor and Passion that you showed keeps it from being in your face, but also which one's kind of ring true? Okay, so let's talk about types and stereotypes in the show, acknowledging them, embracing them versus mocking them, all of that stuff. And which ones do you recognize? There's a lot going on in that question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she wants me to answer. <laughs> I grew up in New York in Chinatown, and the Jewish community is quite mm. close to Chinatown, right? So um, sometimes stereotypes are, are, there are good stereotypes, there are bad stereotypes. Um, I think sometimes if we can take stereotypes and put them in a play and kind of like explode them, right? Um, I think it's a, a great thing. It makes people understand that we're, we're more common than not. That's, That's a really great. great answer. Yeah, great. Um, uh, here and then here, please. Um, I just had a question because of what you said about doing it in this setting with the audience practically on top of you and interacting and looking at people. Has there been a performance where it's like you get the sense like they're not buying this or it's not working or you know they're just sort of sitting there with arms folded like mm, okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, what, what, what do you do when, when, it, when it's not getting the kind of response that you're used to? Yeah, mm -hmm. So this is a very, this is a space where every second you're aware of what they're giving you, especially in the way that this has been staged. What do you do when they're not giving you what you want? <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> I think theater is an experience for someone to either learn something, get something out of it. If they don't like it, they got something out of it. If they love it, they got something out of it. I also think everyone watches theater differently. Mm -hmm. I know I've had friends who come in and they're silent. They watch it. They barely laugh. But then afterwards, they're like, oh my gosh, that was amazing. Or like, I learned so much and this, is, this was so great. So, I mean, we've had all types of viewers, types of audience members, right? Um, but generally like they're with us and we feel that they're with us even if they're quiet or um, just watching or observing um, and because they're with us I think we're able to continue to tell the story yeah you can't judge a book by its cover right mm -hmm. isn't that the mm -hmm. saying um, so I mean as a, a dance teacher I can tell you sometimes when I'm teaching students and they look like they're having a horrible time uh, but they're actually concentrating so yeah. I think for us all we can do is just go on stage and do what we do and love what we do and then uh, it, there are plenty of people who come up to us afterwards who don't aren't very expressive in that it's a, such an intimate space sometimes people yeah feel like they can't even like make a sound yeah, they feel or, exposed like, too you know? right. yeah so they feel really exposed so um yeah I, I, we just keep going yeah we but i will keep... say we've yeah. had some lovely audience interactions these past couple of weeks we've had actual yees come in oh. and they're like we're ye <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. it almost killed my joke <laughs> i was like all right here we go <laughs> let me figure out how to do this one <laughs> love it um you mentioned a few minutes ago about um it feeling right doing this show in this space right now i guess <laughs> why <laughs> uh, right like what what why this show now what do you feel that it has to offer to the people that are walking into the ark and what or, or what does the ark have to offer you when you're doing this show right now 
Well, I mean, Signature is known for musicals. Yeah, <laughs> right? right. So this is their one play that's happening during this season, <laughs> right. right? And I, you know, if you come in not knowing <laughs> anything, you're going to be pleasantly surprised, right? Yeah. It says, oh, it's a whirlwind comedy. What does that mean? <laughs> you know. So I think it's it. It's really fun when people have no idea what they're about to see, and then they mm -hmm. leave. And uh, you know, a lot of people are like, "Wow, it ended so fast!" Or, yeah. and the whole point is like, if you're an audience member, you're in there, and you're with uh, the actors, right? It's just, it's just like a ride. It's a joy ride that we're taking you on. I think, and I'll say it again: this, the what we've been through these past couple of years has been very difficult. We've lost people. We've mm -hmm. we've had so many trials and tribulations. This show I think is so perfect in that it lets people laugh. It lets people have a good time, but it also reminds people that like cherish the people that you have now. Love them. Call them. Yeah. Um get to know them better. So I think that's really beautiful especially in this time. Mm. Thank you. Along those lines, and maybe you just answered this question, um, what, is the, what is King of the East teaching you? What are you learning from this show? Community. Um, I'm learning very much about community. I mean, I, I didn't have a very big Asian community growing up. Um, and so being around all of these people and Pacific Overtures mm -hmm. has been such a beautiful, wonderful thing that I cherish so deeply. Everyone is so lovely. They take care of each other. Like there's a deeper understanding that like isn't even spoken most of the time um, of how much we care for each other. So. I think uh, it just reminds me that uh, art can remind people how to love. Ah, yeah. You know, that's it. Absolutely. I love that. Um, pivoting away in our final minutes uh, from King of the East, uh, looking back at your careers or maybe in school, what are some of the favorite roles that you've played thus far? <laughs> On stage or screen? <laughs> I'll, I'll go for it. <laughs> Uh, for me on television, I was uh, a reoccurring guest star on a show called Mr. Robot. Mm. I don't know if you've ever seen it, mm -hmm. uh, but um, it was uh, a great time. I grew a lot, and also I got to work with uh, my best friend, who B.D. Wong, um, and also um, in terms of of that show, from that, and our how we grew up in our relationship, um, BD started, uh, he one time had to direct The Great Leap and he was looking for a Wen Chang and it was being done in Pasadena Playhouse in, in Los Angeles with a co-production of East West Players and uh, he reached out to me and he was like, I think you'd be right for this part. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't think I can do it. Um, and so um, he, insisted and it turned out to be one of the like the, the next best thing that could happen to me wow. so yeah I love that yeah Lauren um Ashley, well I, you <laughs> no, I respond me. to either Ashley, forgive me. <laughs> I've probably been doing that for the last 54 minutes no, so no, 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 no. Okay. um I think right now Lauren really holds a very special place in my heart like I said I've grown um, and learned so much from this role, um, both about myself and about my family and about everyone. Um, I Some honorable mentions, I mm. guess, would be, uh, I love, I, I don't know why, swinging is really fun. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So when I swing for Pacific Overtures, that was wonderful. Um, Arena stage was ride the cyclone was really fun. I got to fly around. Um, that was new and exciting. Um, Viola in Shakespeare in Love was mm. a very um, challenging role for me as well, um, and so that one is very special. And Zuzu in Dance Nation. Fun. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. 
Um, the show closes, like you said, in two and a half-ish weeks. What's, if you can share with us, what's next? What's, what's lined up for you after this? If anybody is looking for an actor... <laughs> <laughs> We're here. Okay. We can come in a package, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fair enough. <laughs> no follow-up question. Uh, um, last question for the day. Um, you mentioned near the beginning that um, the, this business, this, this art form, that acting can be a, a struggle, that it is a struggle. In spite of that, you both clearly love doing it. What does acting give you? How does it feed you? What does this art form give to you? How does it feed you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone asked me, like, why do you act? It's kind of like on the same yeah. line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, all I know is that for me, if I have the ability to get on a stage or screen and, like, move an audience to feel anything at all, I have done my job. Uh, and so whether it's laughter or mm. tears or just disgust, whatever it is, it's kind of this reminder of all of us that we are still living mm -hmm. and we feel yeah. and we breathe. Wow. That's great. It definitely, I 100% agree, it brings us closer to humanity and us as humans. And for me personally, it teaches me so much about the world, about everyone, and hopefully by in, in that happening and by performing, I'm able to also share that yeah. with other people. Yeah. I love that. Thank you both for sharing with us today and through King of the Youth. Thank you. Thank you. If you can find a seat, find one. We'll see you back next month in Insight Signature <laughs> on November 2nd. Have a good month, everybody.